We caught them faking reports. We caught them faking causation reports. Is there fraud on both sides? There is. But the reason that they focus on the contractors is the contractors are the only ones that truly know the rebuild costs. Is it a fraud where, let's say an insurance adjuster goes to 100 claims and really quick adjust them. He knows he should be there for two hours and he goes like for 15 minutes and he shortens every single claim by 40%. Is it negligence? Is it fraud? Like, what is it? How can you identify? Because later they're fighting it. So they're giving homeowners, you know, laws, scope of work, say, yeah. here's what we own. And then homeowner trust that adjuster. Oh, this is estimate. And when that adjuster tells homeowner, get a couple estimates now, what advice would you give that homeowner who just received insurance estimates, thinking that insurance is on their side, helping them? Oh, my adjuster told me to get three estimates. How awesome is he? And he wrote a claim for 14,000, not knowing that it should be 18,000. And the contractor would come in and say, it should be 18,000. Now they're doubting us as a bad guys, as a greedy guys, and they're trusting the adjuster. Did he mislead the homeowner? Did he commit a fraud? Or it's normal behavior and we should all expect that? Well, no, we shouldn't expect it. Um, the, the problem is the system's broken in the sense that um, what is happening is we're allowing, it starts way before the claim. The, because there's propaganda that gets pounded into the policyholders. I like that word. You know, it, it, the propaganda, and you know this, you being from Russia, <laughs> uh, my wife being from Russia, we know something about this, okay? Um, the, the propaganda machine of the insurance industry um, is very well-oiled machine. If one thing's Americans do well, they market well, okay? But marketing is a form of propaganda, of course. Sure. And the, the danger, you know, it's okay if, look, if they're selling you a, a Mounds candy bar, saying this is the greatest thing, the Mounds candy bar, it doesn't really hurt you. You know, maybe if you eat too many, you can get sick and get fat, but it isn't going to change your life. But the insurance industry, they continuously provide propaganda to policyholders, to homeowners, that makes them extremely vulnerable in times like this because- You're on good hands. <laughs> if you notice, think of the slogans and you will find something in the slogans that all has the common theme. You're in good hands. We're on your side, okay? You know, we, we are like a good neighbor. What they're telling people is that they're on their side of the claim. Now, if they're getting sued, they are. But if they lose their home, it's a lie, Dimitri, for them to say they're on your side. It's a lie to say that they're in good hands. But it's yeah. a lie to say that they're a good neighbor because they're not. Why? Because if they're the ones determining their own liability, they have a legal and financial conflict of interest in being the one that adjusts that claim. And the problem that we have in America is that all of our policy premiums are going to one side, empowering one side against the victim. The reason that they're going after contractors is, sure, is there fraud on both sides? There is. But the reason that they focus on the contractors is the contractors are the only ones that truly know the rebuild costs, mm -hmm. that truly go in there. The contractors are aligned with the interest of the policyholder. It's the insurance companies that have the conflict of interest. The contractors, after a storm, have an alignment of interest. And so what the carriers do is they go into the attorney general's offices, they go into the DA's offices, and they lie. And they say the contractors have a conflict of interest. The truth is, it's the carriers have that have a conflict of interest. It's the carriers, adjusters, that have a financial self-interest in lowering that claim for their client. And that's the problem we have in America. The problem we have in America is people say, well, he'll be fair. It's my neighbor. They're on my side. I see the jingles and the commercials and the things. And it is decades. These slogans have been for decades into people's minds. Now, interestingly, I ask the homeowners this. Remember when you bought your house 
and the homeowner was selling your house and the homeowner told you the condition of the house. Did you get it inspected? Of course you did. What if the homeowner said, don't worry, Dimitri. I'll inspect the roof and the foundation for you. I'm selling you the house. I'll inspect it for you. You would look at them like they were a crook. Mm -hmm. You would know they were a crook. Great point. You would know that they were a crook. But people don't think that they're insurance company. They don't think about it. They suspect it. They want to see. Now, the problem with the here's an estimate, go get your contractor's estimates. The problem with that is that once the adjuster, the third party company, reports to the insurance company it's $14,000 to fix the roof, that sets a claim reserve. And once that claim reserve is set, technically, with that claim number, it's very difficult to get above it because that person has now told their client and set the expectations of their client. And when it turns out the roof costs $24,000, there's a problem. So the advice that I try to give the homeowners, get somebody, whether it be your contractor, whether it be a claims management company like ours, Get somebody to do the adjustment who is truly on their side. Truly the ones where you have an alignment of interest so that you know you're in good hands. You can't be in the hands of somebody who has a conflict of interest. That's the deal. And that that's the biggest mistake that people make. It's also the mistake, by the way, Dimitri, that roofers make and contractors make. I see this all the time. Contractors meeting adjusters, roofers meeting adjusters, and all they're concerned about is whether the contractor says, I'm going to replace the roof. But the contractors don't show up with the bid and how much it costs. So if you show up on a roof and the roofer says, and and the adjuster says, yeah, we'll replace the roof. If, you, if, the, if that roofer isn't showing them how, that guy how much it costs post-storm to fix it, and, that, and they and that's the call biggest... in a number that's too low, and they set the reserve too low. And then the problem, then they wonder all the time, the roofers, they come to me all the time. They say, John, I don't understand it. I don't understand what happened. They said that they would buy the roof. They said the roof needed to be replaced. And as soon as I gave them the bill, they have this engineer that comes in to try to deny it. Why? And that's because what's happening is they're calling in a number too low. They're setting expectations of the carriers too low. And this is the root of the problems. Now, in the, in the engineering case, what's often happening is the engineer is being brought in to lie about the causation because there's not enough in the account. And, and this is the root of the problem that roofers are facing. It's the root of the problem that policyholders are facing as to why it's taking such a long time. Um, which is why this claim center that you have, why we have all these assets on the ground, is to make sure that with an alignment of interest, we're moving in as truly the good neighbor. Sure. With an alignment of interest to say, we inspect like they were buying the house. We have an alignment of interest. And then when the adjuster shows up, we're doing the work for them. And I can show you, and I can show you an example of that. You know, this was a, this is how much work need to do truly. This is, this was a, this was a church here. This is, I only bring out one volume, but this was two volumes. This is the type of, um, the work that we do that's put together um, for the adjuster. So when the adjuster shows up at the property, we go over all of the bids all of the how the policy works and everything if you do your work on the front end and you put now this is this takes a lot of work it takes it takes a lot of professionals to put this together but this type of work is necessary to make sure that you find all of the damages and accurately and accurately assess it because what does the contractor want to do what does the homeowner want to do they just want to rebuild They want their kid's bedroom back for Christmas. They want to get their stuff fixed and they want to get back at home. That's what they want and that's what they need. That's what they paid for and that's what they deserve. The question, uh, maybe let me plant the seed in your head. Can we sue an insurance company 
just like uh, Papa John's. Do you remember they got sued for our slogan, better ingredients, yeah. better pizza. So they got sued saying, yeah. like, you can't say that. Can, yeah. can, can someone sue State Farm saying, no, 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 you're or all state that you're not on your side? Yeah. It, it is absolutely a lie. It is a flat out lie. It's a misrepresentation. I mean, imagine, Dimitri, what would happen if I was an attorney that worked for the insurance company and I met the homeowner and I lied about who I worked for. I would lose my license. I would go to jail in many cases. If I lied, it's, they're, they're lying about being a double agent. They're on the opposite side How and they're get lying with, to the customer. Is it billions that behind them helps them to get away with it? So I've got a, I've got a chart I can show you about because the Institute record some of this stuff and I can show you here. So Dimitri, this is a class that I give to uh, to my staff, to the people that work for me, the attorneys, the secretaries, the internal estimators that we have about how you get your insurance claim paid fairly and quickly to get an insurance payment in 60 days. Um, if you do things right, if you have the process correct, then then, then the claim shouldn't take long. I have gotten eight-figure claims, you know, it's into the 10 millions, done in 60 days. I've gotten them done in 29 days. If the statute in Louisiana, the statute's 30 days. It's a statute that people don't much know about. But in most states, there is a statute that says once all the evidence is in, the insurance company has to make a payment in 30 to 60 days. That is a state law. In from state to state, but people don't use it. And they don't use it because they don't put all the evidence in. The roofers aren't putting in their bids beforehand. Sure. The, the, the attorneys that are working for them are not putting together the stuff all at once and investing in the front end of it. Um, and this is, you know, this is what we were talking about, Dimitri. Um, this is the big lie. You know, this is propaganda, you know, and, and this is a, a story, this, this is a cartoon about propaganda, that if you tell a lie so big and so forceful that people believe it, you know, it's the, the big lie, you know, it's so big, impressive, so it's so real, wow. wow, because if you tell the lie big enough, it's hard to believe. This is, um, we were talking about the slogans, Dimitri, this is the amount of money that was spent in advertising, this is five years old. The amount of money that was spent by these three companies, okay, you're talking more than $2 billion by three companies. And I think they spend like on claims like $5 billion within all the companies or something like that. They're spending all the, and this doesn't count the lobbying money that they're doing in Washington with the state SIU units. Nationwide, on your side, 359 million in one year you're in good hands 778 million one year like a good neighbor 900 nearly a billion dollars in advertising and what are they advertising what's the common factor that they're advertising they're advertising a lie they're advertising that they're on the same side of the policyholder at the time of a claim and that's not true it's just financial it's a it's a legal conflict of interest for the insurance companies to adjust their own claims because they have to pay it. It's, you know, it's, it's like going into court and they're only being a lawyer for the opposition. Can I just say this for the record? I, as a marketer, I'm telling you this right now and tell me if you agree. If insurance companies would do what's right and spend this money maybe on claims, it will be the best advertising. If insurance companies will turn around and actually do what they advertise, Everybody would just use them. I mean, if you spend $2 billion on the claims and you do what's right, everybody talk about it. I don't think so, Dimitri. Don't I, don't, think I so. don't have this much opposite, uh, optimism because the thing is, it doesn't matter because at the time of a claim, and this is this I mean, is a, uh, my, like po my point claim, is, if all state spends billion dollars on the contractors and all the contractors tell all the homeowners, hey, use this company, they pay out their claim, the word of mouth goes so fast. No, you don't think so? It doesn't. Um, I only, now I see this, that principle working in certain companies. For example, let me give you a difference. Um, that would never work with State Farm. 
because State Farm doesn't care. It screws one of its customers. It saves money. It screws all these customers it, and it gets new ones. Okay. Or they don't know, or they don't have the power to do it. And they, so and they renew door. it. And it's a revolving door of customers coming through. And it doesn't matter because people need insurance. They must have it. They can't get a mortgage without it. So it's a compulsory thing in 99% of property owners. They have to get it. It's not a product. You know, if you buy a car in a, in a particular brand and it doesn't work, or all the cars that you're buying are not working, okay, and, you're, and, and you, have, you have some other alternative. But if you have no alternative for some of these companies that are in the market with this market share, what you don't have is you don't have other companies saying, I'm a better company because I pay. What does everybody advertise? Save 15% on your car insurance. But they all advertise the price. And people don't realize they have no way of knowing what is a good product and what's a bad product. But I will give you an example, Dimitri, of what you say works. AIG Private Client Group. Mm -hmm. They're my insurance company. Okay, They're an insurance company um, mainly of very high net worth people. Okay, um, that have a certain amount, you know. So, um, m- myself, um, peer groups of mine, very often will have this company, and you know, for me, I've got tens of millions of dollars of stuff that is adv- that is with AIG Private Client Group, and I have friends that have much more. I have friends with bigger, you know, uh, bigger airplanes and big boats and things, big yachts and airplanes and houses all over, all under one company. And people know each other at certain high circles. And so AIG Private Client Group is going to be very careful of screwing me because I know a lot of people. But this doesn't happen with something like State Farm or Allstate because there's, there's, there's so many people. But that will never work. It never works because why? This is the financial alignment of interest at the time of a claim. It'll always be opposite. The shareholders of the insurance company, the engineers that work and get paid by them, the adjusters get paid by them, the lawyers that get paid by them, they're always going to be on the side of minimizing that claim. Why? Because at the time of a claim, one side is trying to maximize the benefits. The other side is trying to minimize the benefits. You can't just go, oh, sing kumbaya. It isn't going to work because they are the same way when you have a lawsuit, you need a lawyer for one side and a lawyer for the other side. You have to have a balance of the scales. The problem and and the ironic thing is that they're always demonizing the contractor and they're demonizing the contractor by saying the contractor has a vested interest of taking advantage of the homeowner. So we're the bad guys here. We're, what about lawyers? Lawyers are good guys or bad yeah, guys? Well, Do they demonize you? Probably. Yeah, of course they demonize the lawyers on our side. They don't demonize the defense lawyers. They don't demonize the adjusters on the other side. But look, it's you know I had a I had an adjuster the other day, just yesterday, that that tried to say, oh well, I just try to pay things fairly. I said, look, you're you are getting paid by a client that's going to be happier the lower you pay. I'm going to get paid by a client that's happier the higher I get paid. Let's not bull <laughs> each other, okay? Let's stop that. It's it's it it is. I have a role to do, which is to maximize my benefits under that policy, and they have a role to play too. The problem is not that, if we're both ethical. The problem is, is that all the assets are on one side. That in 99% of the claims, 99% of the policyholders don't challenge the decisions of the insurance company in court. So the insurance company knows in 99% of the cases, I'm going to get away with it. And that is math. That's macroeconomics. That does not work. And, and then the other dynamic that's happening, and this chart shows it here, is that the people that are adjusting the claim is a middle company in red. And the mistakes, the bad adjustments, sometimes the bad conduct is occurring with the TPA firm, the adjusters and the engineers, which are trying to make their client happy. And they're cheating for their client. And in some cases, they're reporting reserves and, and, and reports that the insurance company doesn't even know. The insurance company is never looking at the property. They only know what the company they hired told them. 
And so if that company is billing a lot of fees, this is what happened. This happened in the NFIP program in Superstorm Sandy, where there was $50,000 remaining on a claim and the TPA firms, the attorneys and the engineers were billing $300,000 to investigate a $50,000 claim. Wow. Now that was getting paid by the US government in the NFIP program, so they got away with ripping it off. But the, the problem is we have to focus, and it's on the third parties, which have a financial conflict of interest in, in doing that. And that is why a managed repair program are what, you what's, kidding what, me? What's your take on that? I mean, look, if they're honest about what they are, there's no problem. What are, what are they are? They're there to save the money for their client. Now, if any person, if any executive of a managed repair program told you that they had the interests, they were aligned with the interests of the policyholder, they would lie to you. It is an absolute lie. The same way as a defense lawyer of the insurance company, if you asked them, do you have the align are you aligned with the financial interests of the property owner? They would say no. And if they said yes, they would be lying. If Steve Badger sat here and said, I have an alignment of interest with the property owner, I don't think he would say that. You've seen me debate yeah. him on stage yeah. many yeah. times, and I've put that to him, and he will not say that he does. But if an executive of a managed repair program sits in a chair across from you and tells you that they have an alignment of interest with them, they're a liar and they're selling a lie the wow. same way an insurance company does because they have a financial conflict of interest. It's plain and simple.